Hello. I'm supposed to be sitting in an airplane right now flying from Mexico City to New York City, but I'm very, very far away from Mexico City. And I don't think I can make that flight and I don't think I want to. <laughs> anyway, I decided to stay in Mexico till 2022. And when I told my friends and family that I was gonna stay, some of them did understand, but most of them did not. So this video, I'll try my best to explain why is this place so magical? Why I decided to stay? And what's my life is like here in San Cristobal de las Casas, Chiapas, Mexico. <laughs> I usually wake up at 8 a.m. and I have a big cup of coffee in the roof if it's not raining. The reason why I wake up early is this building right there. You know, when you're trying to set up an alarm, it asks you if you want it to be repeated every single day. The charge bells are exactly like that for me. I have an ongoing alarm every single day at 8 a.m. But it's fine. I like to wake up early anyways. So the weather here is a little bit crazy. I'm wearing two sweaters right now. And this afternoon I'll probably be doing yoga in shorts and tank top. Most probably. I got this book from a local thrift store the other day. It's about uh, Latin American Spanish. And uh, it's very fascinating to read how they have uh, different verbs and nouns and sayings in here in uh, Latin America. So I'm gonna read this book and enjoy my cup of coffee and um, show you some other things that I do here in a little bit. So today happens to be the 13th day in Maya calendar, which means that it's the last day. And this guy, my flatmate, is having some kind of cacao ritual. I don't know what it is, never even heard of it, but I'm definitely participating in it. Chocolate actually comes from this region. The people who lived there and spoke indigenous Nahuatl language, they called chocolate chocolate. And when Spanish people came and they spread chocolate all over the world, it kind of kept the same root. It's chocolate in English, chocolate, chocolate in Russian, chocolate in Georgian. So it's more or less the same in every single language. And I'm very, very excited to learn about this Maya chocolate ritual. Diego, who's from Argentina, explained how important the numbers were for Mayans and how their calendar worked. There are many different approaches when it comes to calendar in Mayan culture, but all of them use repeating cycles based on the stars, planet, sun, and the moon. Also, I think that since chocolate is so filling and nutritious, it played a huge role in their lives. Mayans, alongside with Aztecs, believed that cacao was created by the gods in the mountains. They even had a cacao god called Ek Shuach, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. There are many different places that you can check out nearby if you live in San Cristobal. Chiapas is a very green and mountainous place. It has a lot of waterfalls, mountains to hike, a couple of lakes. I've been lucky enough to go check out the nature, which I love and appreciate a lot. I would make a list down below if you're interested to see all these places around. Also, the other thing that I really appreciated is indigenous villages around San Cristobal that you can go to. I have a separate video about Dia de los Muertos when I visited three indigenous villages and I also have a separate video about El Chiflon, the waterfall I hitchhiked to. So if you want to check them out, they are down in the description. We're going to Hot Springs! Yay! It's getting pretty cold in Chiapas, so... It's so cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's really crazy. Yeah, so... We're gonna warm up our cold bones a little bit. I lived in winter for last four or five days and then I took a bus for two hours and I'm in the summer and I'm gonna swim. Like, this is amazing.
Definitely don't forget about Sumidero Canyon. I personally believe that that's the most breathtaking nature in Chiapas. I think the highest point there is 800 meters, which is 2,640 feet. You can also have an amazing wildlife experience there, both flora and fauna. It's a very, very impressive place. It's been very easy to meet people in San Cristobal. Everybody's very open, down to earth, willing to share their experiences, talk to you, listen to you. I truly believe that I connected to the most people here than in any other part of the world. Vale, Abdul. Dime. Uh, ¿Eres de Chiapas? Soy nativo Totsil, Chiapaneco. Vale. Zona Maya. ¿Cómo es vivir aquí en México, en Chiapas? Es diferente Chiapas y México. Sí. Uh, yeah. eh, Chiapas se considera como eh, una nación maya. La gente de aquí nunca considera que son mexicanos. Uh -huh. Se consideran como nativos indígenas. Yeah. Tain actually is the reason why I came here in Chiapas Man. in the first place. <laughs> we yeah. met back in 2016 in Tbilisi, Georgia, right? Sí. And then here we are. And Hi. you are going to stay here at least six months, right? Sí. So ¿Por qué? Fabiaros. ¿Por qué no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and hola, guapa. <laughs> Do you want to tell us why you like Chiapas? Um, yeah, I was here, you know, randomly decided to stay because it's so wonderful. It feels like, like the healthiest place I've ever lived. Because we're in the mountains and we have the fresh air and nature all around us and cool people who are like actually willing and open. So. I love it. Nice. Yeah. ¿Qué estás diciendo? Que aquí en San Cristóbal hay, existe dos idiomas. Ah. Eh, uno es el español y el otro es el nativo. Yeah. Gracias. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, <laughs> uh, vale, Chris. Uh, naciste aquí, sí, en Chiapas. Sí. Y vives aquí. Sí. Y dime una cosa que te gusta en Chiapas y una cosa que cosa que no te gusta. Bien. Empezaré por lo malo, que lo que no me gusta es el, el racismo um, chiapaneco entre los mismos pobladores. Um, las ciudades urbanas discriminan mucho a los pueblos rurales um, y eso es como que una gran diferencia um, en donde no hay equidad como de humanidad. No se ve humanidad en ese aspecto y eso es lo que odio de mi estado. Y algo que me gusta de mi estado son sus fiestas. Unas fiestas increíbles. Uh, Scott, tell us about your adventure. Uh, so last year I tried to walk to Africa from England. And? And I didn't make it to Africa. Why not? Because uh, France went into lockdown and then Spain went into lockdown. All right. So I was like drinking a lot of uh, water from rivers. And then one river was kind of dodgy and I filtered it, but I didn't put these like chlorine tablets in it. So, um, yeah, basically I got very, very ill uh, and then had to go to hospital. It was kind of chaotic. I like had to call an ambulance. I was up by the side of the road and the ambulance couldn't find me. So they had to call the fire brigade and then eventually the fire brigade found me and then like called up the ambulance and got them to come and then... Cool story, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the main things that I love about the place where I'm staying is that it's very close to the forest and we usually come here to just chill, collect some wood, set up a fire, enjoy the beautiful view. I'm alone right now but it doesn't uh, feel unsafe because there are police everywhere and people are just jogging or just walking their pets so it's a, definitely a safe place to hang out even alone. 
I am actually on a mission today. I'm gonna collect some wood and uh, set up a fire later. Oh, how I wish I could take you home. But unfortunately, I can't. If you have seen my other videos of Oaxaca, you probably know that I was very inspired to pick up some pottery and I was lucky enough to find uh, this amazing potter who teaches me how to hand build. And today I'm going to show you where it is and how I do it. So there is no public transportation that comes to this place from my place and I have to walk this road every time I want to go to the pottery studio. San Cristobal de las Casas is the capital and cultural center of Chiapas. In their indigenous languages, in Tzotzil and Tzaltan, the name of the area is Jovel, which means the place in the clouds. It makes sense because San Cristobal can be misty and magical during sunset and sunrise. The town is pretty small and walkable, which I love. I have only taken taxi for three or two times here. The sidewalks are extremely narrow though. In most parts of the town, two people cannot walk side by side. 
San Cristobal has generally avoided the drug violence that has affected other parts of Mexico, but some locals told us that the cartel is running the town and couple policemen were kidnapped in November. But honestly, I have never ever felt unsafe here, especially in the central area. However, I try my best to be mindful about me doing things all by myself and alone. There are so many fun and interesting things going on in San Cristobal. By the way, some gringos call it San Cris, since it's a pretty long name to pronounce. On weekends, the whole town is out, drinking, dancing, having fun. This place is a hub for hippies and backpackers, but you can definitely find local Mexican travelers who visit the state and the town as well. I love how diverse this place is, but I can for sure say that tourism has not washed away the culture and the people take a huge pride of their customs and traditions. The town is definitely getting gentrified though. It would be interesting to see how everything changes in a few years. I usually do not go back to the places I have already visited. I really don't see the point. There are millions of new parts of the world that I want to see. Why spend my time, money and energy on something I have already experienced? Well, San Cristobal is definitely an exception. I would love to come back here one day and feel the energy of this magical place one more time in my life. To sum up this video, I think uh, what I'm trying to say is that life is so much simpler here in Chiapas than in New York. New York is hectic. Anybody who visited it or lived there knows what I'm talking about. I enjoy this beautiful view. I enjoy simple meals, people hanging out with me, peaceful yoga practice. This is something that brings me joy and I really don't think that there is any rush for me to go back to New York and start the hectic life again. I wanted to stay, I followed my instinct and I stayed and I have zero regrets. I would probably be super desperate if I was sitting in that airplane and flying back to New York. I am absolutely happy that I followed my heart and I stayed here. I'm definitely gonna leave this place at some point and it's gonna be probably super sad, but I know the day is gonna come. I know I have to go back and I will. Thank you so much everybody for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. If you like it, give it a thumb up and subscribe. If not, you can just keep on watching without subscription. And I really hope that I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye-bye.